Hi, I'm Ryan Zemanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got a quick video for you about a really obscure feature of Iowa class battleships. This is the dumbwaiter. The dumbwaiter is an elevator that connects the officer's galley to the various officer's spaces throughout the main deck and superstructure of the battleship. This is an original design feature of the ship. Oftentimes, dumbwaiters, especially in like colonial era homes, are manually powered. It's usually a rope going up through a pulley, and as you pull that, you're pulling the elevator up. Well, uh, Iowa class battleships have an actual motor powered dumbwaiter. My last museum ship I worked on, the Coast Guard Cutter Taney, had one of those old style rope dumbwaiters, and believe it or not, it wasn't on her in 1936 when she was built. It was something that was added later in her career. Uh, essentially, it is there to make it easier to move the, the full containers of food that are prepared down here in the officer's galley up to the officer's pantry one deck above us. Not all of the Iowa class battleships retain their dumbwaiters and not all of them retain their officer's galleys here on second deck. The dumbwaiter first stops on the main deck in the officer's pantry just aft of the officer's wardroom. That is where the food that is prepared down here is plated. On our sister ship, Missouri, and I'm not sure about Iowa and Wisconsin yet, but at least on Missouri, this space was gutted and turned into offices, and the officer's galley functions all moved up to the officer's pantry rather than having them duplicated in both areas. On New Jersey in the 80s, it's even possible that not all of the equipment down here in the officer's galley was reactivated. We have stickers on some of the equipment that says active and inactive, and we believe that those are Navy era. They're definitely not museum era. Uh, so that implies that even though we retain this space and reuse this office space, uh, that it was not used as fully as it had been earlier in the ship's career, which makes sense given the reduced number of crew. So, the dumbwaiter, in fact, stopped working sometime in the mid-80s, around 1986, according to crew testimonials. And that is further um, corroborated by the ladder out here. So the dumbwaiter is in the vestibule between the officer's galley and this passageway here it leads to the post office and leads back to the machine shop that way and my office is if you go that way. Uh, and we've got this ladder up to the main deck, and it's probably one of the least steep ladders on the entire ship. However, if you look up here, you can see where the old light locker, like a World War II era light locker, basically a closet built around the stairs, so if we open the door up there, light down here isn't going to go up and, and out where a Japanese submarine can see us or something like that. So all these ladders would have had light lockers around us. We've got the remnants of one here uh, removed probably in the 1980s. Not all the Iowa's lost theirs. Iowa still has a lot of her light lockers if you're interested in seeing this feature anywhere. Regardless, uh, the light locker comes down uh, essentially to the base of the ladder. So it's possible that there was a door right here at the base of the ladder, but that seems unlikely. It seems more like they took out a significantly steeper ladder and replaced it with this gentler one so that when the dumbwaiter stopped working in the mid 80s, it was easy for the stewards and mess cooks down here to carry the officer's food up the ladder. The dumbwaiter, like I said earlier, is motorized. So we've got this compartment down here we undog that and you can access the motor for any maintenance work. Seems like this ship was just so far along in her career they decided not to even bother. Uh, you've got a bicycle chain that hoists this up. It basically goes up in a loop and it comes down this rail. And at the bottom here, uh, you've got a spring that can catch it when it drops. The ship is designed to take uh, tremendous impacts in combat and they may well rattle the dumbwaiter loose. So it is captured on these two rails and uh, inside of this trunk so that it's not going to just like fly out wherever and it will drop right down and hit those springs instead of being a, a direct metal on metal contact that may further damage the ship. Um, right here we have the controller for the dumbwaiter. This seems to be an original World War II controller. It's got a Bakelite tag on it that says dumbwaiter 
and uh, it lists all the stops for it. It's got a stop switch right here, second deck, which is where we are, main deck, the officer's pantry, the first superstructure deck, or the O1 level, that's right outside the captain's cabin. So if food is being prepared down here, it then goes up to the captain's pantry where it is plated. The second superstructure deck, that is the original admiral's cabin. And uh, believe it or not, even though those spaces were deleted, the dumbwaiter entrance still is at that level. The dumbwaiter can still go up that high, assuming it's functioning properly. In the 1980s, when the admiral's cabin was moved uh, to next to the captain's cabin, they would have just used the, the same stop on the first superstructure deck for um, both the captain and the admirals. They certainly were using the same pantry on this ship. And Wisconsin and Iowa had their pantries expanded to be able to accommodate both the captain and the admirals. Ours was not. That said, the admiral's cabin isn't re-added on this ship until after the dumbwaiter's already not working, according to the crew reports. So, what are some other obscure features about Iowa-class battleships you'd like to hear about? Let us know in the comments section down below. Have you ever heard of a dumbwaiter on a ship? Can you think of who invented the dumbwaiter? Let us know in the comments section down below. Uh, fun fact, it's a president. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum. Thanks for watching.